Welcome to the Lincoln Memorial, dedicated in 1922 to honor President Abraham Lincoln, this nation's 16th president. You may begin listening to this historical presentation while you approach the monument and make your way carefully up the stairs to the rotunda. Feel free to pause and play this presentation at any time. The Lincoln Memorial was designed by Henry Bacon to resemble that of a Greek temple. His true inspiration was the Parthenon in Greece. You'll notice there are 36 columns surrounding the temple to represent the 36 states that were in the Union at the time of Lincoln's death. Those states are inscribed at the top of the memorial, which includes the dates those states entered the Union. They are separated by double wreath medallions. Above this, on the attic frieze, are the inscribed names of the 48 states present at the time of the memorial's dedication. The exterior of the monument stands nearly 100 feet tall, with 58 steps leading up to the monument, two steps representing the terms of Lincoln's presidency, and the remaining 56 for his age at the time of his death. An interesting architectural feature is that the columns, the exterior walls, and the facades are inclined slightly toward the building's interior to compensate for distortions which would otherwise make the memorial appear to bulge out at the top when compared with the bottom. Many thought that the Greek temple design was far too extravagant for a man of Lincoln's humble character. Instead, some proposed a simple log cabin shrine. The site also had its opposition. At the time, this site in West Potomac Park was seen by many to be either too swampy or too inaccessible. The Planning Commission stood firm on this location, feeling this spot was ideal, overlooking the Potomac River near the Washington Monument and surrounded by open land. Designer Henry Bacon insisted on using a variety of stones in the construction of the memorial. The granite at the terrace level came from Massachusetts. The marble of the upper steps and outside facade came from Colorado, while the pink marble floor of the chamber came from Tennessee. The interior walls and columns are made from Indiana limestone, and the marble used for the ceiling tiles came from Alabama, which were soaked in paraffin to give them a translucent appearance. The statue of Lincoln was carved from Georgia marble. All these stones from several parts of the United States symbolize the importance of the Union to President Lincoln. The interior of the monument features murals and various inscriptions on friezes. Most notable, however, is the statue of a seated Lincoln designed by Daniel Chester French. He's displayed in deep contemplation, reflecting the difficult times of his presidency during the Civil War. The statue is 19 feet tall, including the 10-foot marble pedestal. The serious look on Lincoln's face is intended to remind visitors of the difficult time of civil war through which President Lincoln guided our nation. The reeds wrapped together in the arms of Lincoln's chair symbolize the way that Lincoln wanted to keep us bound together as one nation. Lincoln's left hand is clenched in a gesture of determination to fight the war to its end in spite of the ongoing bloodshed. Lincoln's right hand is open and relaxed, inferring how Lincoln wanted to bring the southern states back into the Union in a peaceful way, without looking for revenge when the war was over. The statue is surrounded by engraved readings of the Gettysburg Address, Lincoln's second inaugural address, and canvas murals by French painter Jules Guerin. Each mural is 60 feet long by 12 feet high and weighs 600 pounds. Together, the murals visually symbolize the principles of Abraham Lincoln and emphasize the two great accomplishments of his presidency, emancipation and unity. Notice the emancipation mural above the Gettysburg Address on the south wall, which represents freedom and liberty. The central panel shows the angel of truth releasing slaves from the shackles of bondage. The left panel of the mural represents justice and law, and the right panel represents immortality. Surrounding the central figure are faith, hope, and charity. Now, looking at the unity mural above the second inaugural address on the north wall features the angel of truth joining the hands of two figures representing the north and south. The angel's protective wings embrace the arts of painting, philosophy, music, architecture, chemistry, literature, and sculpture. 
emerging from behind the music figure, you'll notice a veiled image of the future. The left group represents fraternity, while the right group represents charity. On the Unity mural, the fourth figure from the left of the Angel of Truth is that of the memorial architect Henry Bacon. Take a look at the inscribed inaugural address. The word future was mistakenly carved with a first letter E instead of F. See if you can tell where it's been corrected. The Lincoln Memorial has become a symbolic site for many political gatherings over the years, and specifically for the civil rights movement. Most notably, the memorial was the backdrop for Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech in 1963 in front of an estimated crowd of 250,000 people. The spot where Reverend King stood is on the landing 18 steps below Lincoln's statue. It was engraved in 2003 in recognition of the 40th anniversary of the event. You can see this engraving as you walk up the very center of the steps. Also, be sure to visit the memorial exhibit on the lower level to the left of the stairs to see more about the history and important events that have taken place over the years at this historical site. That concludes our presentation on the Lincoln Memorial. There are dozens of national landmarks within a short walk from here. Check your map display for the nearest national landmarks included on the tour.